Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to discuss some of the biggest mistakes students make with regards to notes making and how you can overcome these mistakes so as to make the best use of your study time and to maximize your output. Now, since this video is all about note taking, I just want to show that I am not being a hypocrite here uh, because all my life I have been taking notes even now as a faculty here at IIT Kharagpur. So let me just go back and show you some of the notes that I have made. So this is, these are the bunch of notes, only a small fraction, mind you, of the notes that I had made during my undergraduate days. So it covers all the, uh, many of the subjects. And I have another couple of boxes at home uh, containing many such copies like this. So this contains fluid mechanics, mechanics of materials, dynamics, uh, even the tutorial sheets, thermodynamics, etc, etc. Uh, all of these were taken during class mind you by hand now uh, going beyond that and now that i'm a faculty i have continued to make notes uh, before going to class and just to clear things up in my own head so these are some of the notes again mind you these are not the complete set of notes uh, this is a bigger bunch actually this is all that i had here in my office it's quite heavy actually i hope i don't drop it so you see these are all my notes uh, and there's quite a few. Uh, these do not contain any fluid mechanics notes. Uh, these are mostly solid mechanics, elasticity, etc. Uh, anyway, so I just wanted to show you that uh, I'm not um, shooting off my mouth here. So who is this video meant for? This video is primarily meant for school students. Students especially studying in class 6 to 10, but primarily those who are studying in 10 plus 2, preparing for JE, NEET, etc. And uh, uh, certainly the students who are already in undergraduate classes. Uh, it may not be so useful for PhD students because uh, there a different sort of dynamic is at play with regards to reading and note making. Uh, so I'll, I'll not go get into that. So this is primarily meant for school students and undergraduate students. Now, uh, keeping this objective in mind uh, of uh, the importance of note taking and how the students suffer if they don't take proper notes, I just want to uh, discuss some of the biggest mistakes that students make and uh, and upfront I want to say that when they do not take these proper notes uh, and this is actually one of the big factors behind them suffering is that uh, while attending a lecture or while reading from a book many times it happens that the students are absolutely clear on the concepts they feel that they are quite confident with the concepts despite that feeling when it comes to actually solving the problems on their own later on or maybe tackling some kind of an examination or maybe uh, going for some kind of mock test even, uh, what happens is that the students feel that all their knowledge, all their concepts which they had felt quite confident about while reading or while attending the lectures, uh, somehow that knowledge has completely deserted them, it has completely left them. So a big reason behind this, I feel, is not taking proper notes. Now please mind uh, you that some people have a notion that note taking is only related to uh, like rote kind of learning, this is completely far from the truth. All right, uh, I also want to make it clear that uh, whatever I'm going to discuss primarily is associated with scientific and technical subjects. Uh, this, I, I don't have the required expertise to advise you on taking notes in social sciences and the humanities. So that's that. All right, what is the biggest mistake? The biggest mistake, of course, is that uh, the students do not take notes while reading from the books. Okay, this is the most inefficient way of studying from books, I feel. Uh, some of you may feel that, okay, I'm st uh, studying from books and then I'm solving problems uh, and uh, note taking is just rote, uh, rote learning. It's not. Okay, so this is the most inefficient way of studying from books and I will expand on this later. Uh, the next is that some students, they, uh, they are not as uh, inefficient as not taking any notes at all in the sense that they do make some underlines, they make some highlights and maybe in the margins they will write some notes. Uh, but uh, although it is a little bit better than the first mistake, but still it is far from sufficient. Okay, so the only thing which these kinds of things accomplishes, like reading and rereading and maybe rereading with a little bit of an emphasis on the underline and the highlighted parts, uh, is just to make you familiar, more and more familiar with the text. 
Now familiarity is not really true knowledge. It doesn't give you an in-depth understanding of the concepts, any new insights into the various connections that may exist. So just underlining or just rereading and revising the same thing over and over again may make you feel that you are becoming more and more familiar with the concepts, so to speak, but you are not really absorbing them. This is something very, very fundamental which you should understand. The next thing is that some students, they rely exclusively on the lecture notes which are provided by their tuition teachers or their coaching teachers. Now, you may feel that this is a little bit more efficient as compared to books. Maybe so, because after all, these lecture notes are prepared by quite experienced teachers who have a lot of experience in coaching the students, in preparing the students for the various exams. But by the very definition of that, please try to understand that these lecture notes are geared primarily towards examination preparation. So if you are relying exclusively on that, then uh, you may be preparing somewhat well for your exams, but in terms of the real acquisition of the knowledge, this is not sufficient. So, uh, and, and, and see, this is like an intermediary be between the actual book, the concepts, the, the full comprehensive concept which is present in the books and your brain. So, if you only rely on these notes, on these lecture notes which are given to you, then you will be at a loss. Plus, a big thing is that if you um, keep on reading for only from these notes without going through the books, then the actual textbooks, then it kind of develops bad study habits in your brain. So maybe at the school level, at 10 plus 2 level, it would be okay. But once you get into the undergraduate days and even go for higher studies, uh, this kind of bad study habits is going to bite back at you because at that level there will be no tuition teachers there will be no coaching teachers to handhold you and give you ready-made notes like this which will help you directly in your examination preparation so when you don't have those notes what are you going to do and this is a problem which i have seen many many students face in their actual undergraduate studies there are many students who have done quite well during their J preparation during their 10 plus 2 but once they come to the undergraduate there are a number of other factors of course but this is one factor which I feel is at the very crux of why students fail to perform as well as they were doing earlier before coming to the undergraduate days. Another mistake which students make is that so this is my next point uh, is that students many a time and this is quite common in their in the undergraduate uh, level is that they don't take their own notes they attend the lectures sometimes they miss the lectures but at the end of the day what they will do is not even at the end of the day before the exams they will go around collecting the notes from some of the students who were more attentive uh, or, or more serious in um, in attending the lectures regularly and perhaps a little bit more serious in taking the notes themselves so these students, the rest of the students, they will take these notes and they will photocopy them on, and now, now maybe they will just take photo, uh, photographs uh, or maybe scan them and study from this. And this seems like a shortcut, very efficient way of uh, going about the thing. But mind you, this is a massive mistake. Uh, all these notes that I showed you, all of these on an average have at least gone to five to ten other of my batchmates. All of this, some of some some sometimes what happened was my notes were shared by so many students, and then it went to another hostel, um, another hall of residence, and I had to go about searching where my notes are. Uh, that has also happened. So I know this has been going on forever. People photocopying notes from their uh, from their friends, but this doesn't really help you because see these notes are again some kind of an intermediary between what the teacher taught in class and what you are supposed to be learning these notes are actually prepared by somebody who has his own way of thinking own way of understanding now if you artificially borrow these notes you are only trying to kind of rely on borrowed thoughts those thoughts are not your own 
So the kind of understanding that you would have had if you had made the notes yourself, this is not at all comparable to what you would gain by just reading from these kinds of borrowed notes. I hope I made myself clear. Okay, this is a very, very subtle point, but very important point. So these are some of the biggest mistakes. What can you do to overcome these mistakes? Now, the first thing, if it is not apparently clear by now, is that you have to necessarily make your own notes. When you are sitting in a lecture, when you are reading through a book, make your own notes. This is very, very important in the undergraduate days uh, in the in the plus two level that you have to make your own notes preferably by hand because there are studies which show that when you take notes by hand it helps you to engage more in classes a proper scientific studies are done with control groups and everything that when you take notes physically in a notebook it helps you to retain the information better because you are engaging more in uh, uh, with the with the teacher and please don't think that if your handwriting is a little bit bad or handwriting is slow, you'd be missing out. Because when you think like that, what you're actually doing is you would be summarizing the things which are really important from the, from the notes. And nowadays, many teachers give their slides, give their uh, uh, notes also. Please do not just rely on them. Take them, definitely take them, use them. But your main anchor should be your own notes. This is extremely important. Some of you may be thinking that, okay, in the technical and scientific subjects, uh, who makes notes from books? And this is true. That would be, I mean, a quite impractical thing to say, especially to undergraduate students. Who sits down and takes notes from books? You read the books, you study, you do the problems from the problem sheets given to you or maybe from the end of the chapters in the book, and that's that. Uh, if you can solve the problems, you know that you can, you're, you're good with the concepts. And then you go for the exam. Now, what I'm sa saying is a little bit different. And this is something which I have not found highlighted, being highlighted in any textbook or any blog which talks about, or in any other video which talks about uh, note making. This is my personal thing. So please listen carefully. What I'm saying is that you read from the books. Don't take notes then. Go for the problems. Once you have done a few problems, you will automatically discover certain kinds of links and connections between what you had already studied before, maybe in the previous classes or maybe in the other chapters, maybe in other subjects also. You will discover certain links and connections on your own as you are studying and as you are solving the problems on your own. These are the golden nuggets of information which you have discovered for yourself. These are uniquely yours. You must make it a point to note down these golden nuggets of information because you, if, you, if you do not record this, this will get dissipated from your brain. These, these little flashes of conceptual understanding which you can discover for yourself, if you do not put this on record, I mean, it's a massive loss. Okay, why would you want to lose this, these flashes of insight? Okay, these brilliant flashes of insight that you have while solving the problems. So please do not do that. So my suggestion is that first of all, study from the book, solve the problems, maybe study from the lecture notes also, which the teacher provides you, solve the problems. And when these kinds of connections, these insights you discover for yourself, record them. There are certain points on which uh, like more subjective kind of notes directly from books would be necessary. And this is more relevant to the school students because especially for board exams, it was certainly true in our time that in addition to the problems, there would be certain subjective kind of questions. For example, describe Millikan's oil drop experiment. Now, if you just study from the book directly, or if you study from some given lecture notes, some ready-made lecture notes, you can probably answer them. But if you write your own notes, uh, describe the things in your own words, what will happen is that you will really absorb this thing. Now, you may think now, what's the what's the real benefit of describing these experiments? Well, the, the benefit may not be evident to you right away, but this is the kind of descriptive thinking, which mind you is also very scientific in nature, which will be extremely important for you as you go to higher and higher classes. Mind you that all scientific endeavor, even in extremely technical things, is not just 
problem solving there are certain logical steps which you have to take into account which you, by which you proceed scientifically okay i mean i am in a department where from day zero you have to go for problem solving in mechanics then in mechanics of materials mechanics of solids fluid mechanics in everything there is problem solving despite that i am saying this that not everything just boils down to simple problem solving or simple in the sense that straight cut problem solving there are many many things for which you have to take logical steps uh, in a very coherent very scientific fashion which are not like problems which are like decisions and uh, like choices between two bifurcations uh, so when you do a large project you have to you have to think in that in those terms so unless you develop this kind of a mental muscle to interpret something which is there in the book in your own words you'll be at a real loss later on this is my personal feeling and something which i have gained by experience all right so these are the main things which i wanted to discuss with you i would like to point out some things because we are on youtube here that if you search about note making and note taking here on youtube you will find a lot of videos which talks very beautifully uh, about some brilliant techniques of note taking maybe digital note taking and so on and so forth many of these are very good but they are not directly relevant at the school level uh, my suggestion is that be very practical about it please do not try to uh, artificially borrow some kind of an advice which may not be directly relevant for you okay so as you go higher and higher maybe those kinds of advice will be relevant but at this point whatever you need personally for you you are the best judge of that try to do what is necessary rather doing some kind of cosmetically stylish thing like i don't know bullet journaling or many other such kinds of uh, taking notes in pocket books field notes and this and that this I mean, YouTube is filled with these kinds of things. Uh, these are all good, but they have a different target audience. They have a different um, target paradigm of interest. So what I discussed here is completely different. So I hope you take this, uh, you understand this in the proper spirit and do what is actually required of you. So all the very best in your note taking and learning journey.